Thank you for taking a few moments to view this video with me as we begin to discuss the concept of internal validity. Now, here's the thing that I'd like you to know. This concept relates to our discussion on experimental research designs, and I think you'll be able to see how these two concepts are connected in just a moment. But if you happen to have your worksheet that goes along with this video, please feel free to pull that out so that we can go through the content together. Now, at the very top of your sheet, you have a section that lists the question of internal validity. And so what I'd like to do is define that concept for you. And we're going to define that by posing a question. So if this concept of internal validity were a person, it would ask a question of each experiment that we conduct. And so the question that it would ask would be this. It would ask, are the results of my experiment due to the independent variable, IV, or something else? So again, are the results of my experiment due to the independent variable or something else? So here's something that I'd like you to think about. Remember, in our discussion of what an experiment is, we said that the goal is to see if there is a cause and effect relationship between two things. And so if we happen to conduct an experiment, we want to have some degree of certainty that our results are reflective of whatever the independent variable is. And so we're going to look at a host of terms here in just a moment that really help us to get a better understanding of what we're talking about. But right before we do that, there are two concepts um, that will really help to set the stage for us. Now, this first one you're probably going to be very familiar with because we've talked about it. Uh, this first one is extraneous variable. And so I want to give us just a very generic definition here. We could say that these are variables that may compete with the independent variable. Okay, so again, variables that may compete with the independent variable in relation to the outcome of the study. Now, I'd like you to do one more thing here if you happen to have maybe a different color pencil or pen. Uh, let's underline the word may here because that's going to have some unique significance. So again, our extraneous variable definition is that these are variables that may compete with the independent variable in relation to the outcome of a given study. So let's now look at this other definition that we have here, which is what we call a confounding variable. Now, this is a type of extraneous variable, so we'll list that first. So again, it's a type of extraneous variable that does... So again, what I'd like you to do is underline this term, does. So again, if we compare these for just a moment, an extraneous variable may impede or influence the independent variable, and a confounding variable is a type of extraneous variable that does influence the dependent variable. 
So what we're saying here is that these concepts are very much interrelated. And so we're going to look at what we call threats to internal validity. And so the terms that we have listed here, history, maturation, selection bias, experimental mortality, testing effect, and instrumentation, these are all things that depending on the study that we look at or investigate, these are all threats to internal validity. So let's look at the terms that we have here. Now it's important to note that these terms represent something unique and specific. And so let's tackle the first one that we see here. Now the first one that we have listed here is history. And what this refers to are events occurring during the experiment. Right, so again, events occurring during the experiment that are not part of the treatment. So maybe this example will help. If you think back to one of the earlier examples that we gave about someone being given an energy drink, well, we said that if we had given an energy drink and we measured their level of alertness, yes, we would think automatically that it's the energy drink that led to them having that increased level of alertness. But maybe you'll remember we said that what if that individual had already had another energy drink? And so that would actually be an example of history. Again, something took place during the study that wasn't a part of the treatment that could impact the results. Now, the next one here is termed maturation. And by maturation, we can say it this way. It is the process within participants So again, the process within participants that operate as a result of time passing. We could see maturation taking place within a given study when things like aging happen, when fatigue happens, or maybe even when hunger happens. So I'll put these examples here. Age, fatigue, and hunger. So think about it this way. Let's imagine that you are participating in a study and they've asked you to perform some type of test. And for whatever that test may be, imagine that you just naturally get tired over the course of time. You may not perform as well on that particular test. And so it's possible that the researcher may inaccurately perceive that you didn't perform well, but it may have just been due to your general fatigue. So again, depending on the study, this is something that we could also see take place with things like aging over time and with hunger. Now, the next one is something that we call selection bias. And all selection bias is, is the gathering of participants Okay, so again, the gathering of participants by means other than randomization. So 
So in other words, if we don't randomly select and randomly assign people to groups for experiments, we're saying that that can actually impact the results of our study. And the large reason for this is because if we don't randomly assign people to a particular group, we really have no way to say that that group is uh, diverse. So if that group is not diverse, there may be characteristics about those individuals because of their grouping that may negatively impact the results of the study. So again, anytime we conduct an experiment and we don't have randomization included with it, it can threaten the results of our study. Now, this next one is pretty unique, just given the name or the terminology here. Uh, we call this experimental mortality. And the loss of participants from an experiment due to unforeseen circumstances. So we can think about it this way. Um, sometimes people are just going to ask to be removed from a study if we're conducting it. And that's okay because they have the right and the privilege to participate or not to participate. And then sometimes people leave because of maybe health reasons or people may leave because um, of a number of things. So we just use the term experimental mortality to relate to the fact that we may lose participants along the way. Now, this next one is what we call the testing effect. A pretest may impact how a participant performs. So let's imagine it this way. Let's imagine that you were taking a course and you were given a pretest. And let's imagine that I gave you that same test as your post test. You know how you've probably had back in the day, teacher gave you the pretest and you, you took a post test at the end of the class and it was the same. Well, the testing effect says that by you having been administered the test once, you learn something from just having taken the test that one time. So in a scenario like we just mentioned, having taken the test previously may not be a true reflection of what you gained throughout the course. Now, here's the last one, and we call this instrumentation. And so here's what instrumentation is. It is changes... in the use or administration of an assessment or tool. So again, changes in the use or the administration of an assessment or tool. So let's think about it this way. If you all are familiar with goniometry, that is the use of measuring joint angles. So usually what happens is um, there's usually a subtle difference between the way one person measures goniometry and the way someone else measures goniometry. So if we were conducting an experiment and let's say you had an opportunity to measure someone's range of motion, and then I follow up behind you, there's going to be a slight difference there. And so because we've changed who's using the instrument or who's making the assessment, our results aren't going to be as reliable. Now, the same could be true about an instrument that's no longer calibrated. So think about machines that we might see in a fitness center. Um, you've probably heard that sometimes those machines have to be calibrated. In other words, they have to be reset or readjusted. So again, these are what we call threats to internal validity. 
And if we're not careful, these things can impact the results that we get. So the question is, well, how do we control for this? How do we limit these threats to internal validity uh, impacting or maybe even negating the results of my study? Well, there are a few things that we can do. And so I'm going to give them to you here. Uh, and I'll list this at the top just so you'll have it as a reference point. Something that we can do is to ensure that we utilize randomization. Randomization is going to be a great cure-all for most of these threats to internal validity. Um, something else that we can do is to utilize placebos. So you'll remember that we had an opportunity to talk about that in one of our earlier discussion posts. Uh, and something else that we can do is to use what we call blind studies and or double blind studies. So again, blind or double blind studies. Now, for blind and double blind studies, that relates to something specifically. So if you're wanting to jot this down for note taking purposes, please feel free to do that. Um, we say that a blind study or a blind setup is one in which the participants do not know whether they are in the experimental group or if they are in the control group. And so we're not going to get into the particulars of this, but there is a document in this week's folder that will give a little bit more insight on how we can do this. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next video.